everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we've got guests again. These guys are gonna get guested out, Bob. I think, I think, I think we're not gonna do any more guests. Should we not do any more guests for us here? We'll do a couple more, because I've got a couple people standing out there. <laughs> but I think we need to go off the grid on guests. We have one special guest in the summer. But other than that, we're going to uh, calm it down. I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm not as excited about sharing the stage. You know, yeah. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a, a whore. I want the, the I want the attention. I want the limelight. Yeah. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are, how you got here? Because I think how you got here is yeah. interesting. It kind of uh, appeals to me. All right, Vaniacs. Um, my name is Michael Malanga. I was introduced to Gary and Wine Library TV, I'd say about two years ago, by my very good friend uh, Ian Edelstein who is actually in Italy right now doing a big Barolo thing. And, What's um, Ian scene? Um, Ian is just like a big foodie wine guy. He's been like that since I've known him. I've known him for about three years now. We went to college together. And uh, yeah, he's just always been into the whole food, food, and, wine. food and wine. That's like his awesome. That's like his thing. I mean, Where's he from? Uh, Buffalo. And you? Um, originally Los Angeles, but California. Now I live in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So. Is he a Bills fan? Um, I don't know. I actually don't think he likes sports. He's like a jazz musician and stuff. So. Weird. Yeah. Just kidding. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Ian. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, he introduced me to uh, the show, and then from watching the show for a while, just, you know, started getting into wine more. Um, I took a big trip to Italy myself, actually, last summer, so got a lot of Tuscan exposure. That's mm -hmm. probably my, my comfort zone is the Tuscan stuff. That's what you feel you know. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so I actually started working for a restaurant, and... Um, that was in Philadelphia when I lived in Philadelphia briefly. Mm -hmm. Now that I live in Manhattan, I'm still working for another restaurant by the same owners. Um, Where's that? Downtown, uh, Meatpacking District, mm -hmm. um, Morimoto. Know well. You know. Um, Took Lizzie there for uh, Valentine's Day two or three years ago. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, so from just being in the restaurant world, being in the scene, you know, getting more and more exposure to wine, good food, um, just got more interested in it. And uh, it was about, I'd say, about three, four months ago. Um, Ian and I were having actually a conversation, and I was like, "Dude, I would kill to be on the show. Like, not that I have anything to bring to the table, but you know, it'd be it'd be wild to get one of us on the show." And he had this idea of like, "Well, use what you, you know, setting crush it, get friends on Facebook, <laughs> get friends on Twitter, yeah. and just campaign to get on the show." That's exactly what I did. I um, started a group that just said, "Get Mike on WLTV." There's a picture of me in a from a uh, when I when I was in Italy in Tuscany mm -hmm. and. Uh, I saw it. Me and you, yeah, you did. Um, so that's basically what I did, and then I emailed you a bunch. Didn't get any answers, but I emailed you a bunch. What's um, funny about that is, is that I started. I, I got turned on to it very quickly because yeah? you know, yeah, because I mean, like four people were like, "Get my get Mike on the show." Mm -hmm. I was like, "This was smart." I'm like, "All right, this guy's gonna get on, but let's let's like make him hustle for it." Yeah. So you know, so, so, so I started getting the emails. I'm like, "All right, let's see how much he wants this." Okay. So I'm like, "Put this in this folder. See if this kid will make it on the show folder." So what I did was, because I, I wasn't getting anything back from you yep. or from Matt or, yep. or anybody else. I think I emailed. I blackballed that. I blackballed you internally. Yeah, yeah. You just were like, ignore him. Um, so <laughs> what I did was, I went ahead and um, looked at uh, like raising something charitable, some money or something, trying to get something going. To, I don't know, make it more appealing to you guys. So what I did was um, did some research and found actually the Mario Batali Foundation, mm -hmm. which um, works to feed children, um, I think mainly in America, but hungry kids, make sure they're well-read, yep. well-educated, protected, you know, cared for. Um, and I started thinking about it. that's something that, you know, is a real problem here. We're, we have so much stuff going on overseas right now that, you know, we should probably try to focus a little bit more on the home front, I think. Um, Getting political on the show, M Square. Sorry, sorry. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mott. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I just looked at that. And yep. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to have a job working mm -hmm. in a very you know, high profile restaurant. I mm -hmm. eat well almost every day do that they, I'm there. Do, they, do you get to eat this stuff afterwards? Sometimes. That's awesome. Yeah. Food is great. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty lucky. But uh, so I was just thinking, you know, there's obviously people in America that aren't as fortunate. Mm -hmm. So, what I did was put an incentive to say everybody that joined the group, I would donate a dime to this foundation, trying mm -hmm. to get a lot of people to join. And then I think in about 24 hours, I had almost 200 people there. Mm -hmm. And then on Twitter and stuff, trying to get more. So hopefully now I'll get a bunch more. Yeah, let's link that up, yeah. Mott. Let's do the right link thing there. 
because we want to we want to milk all the money out of this guy we can for this. And I am in college, so let's take it easy. I got, <laughs> I got loans. <laughs> all right. So you were downstairs with K Murph picking these, yeah. or how that um, happened, right? Yeah, I came in yep. a little bit ago, and we were just looking oh, at the Italians. You so. mentioned that we wanted to call your buddy Ian. Yeah, you want to call? Yeah, him? let's call Ian. Let's, do it. let's pour the first wine. Uh, Neil Rosenthal wine, uh, Palo Bay. Uh, this is a uh, unbelievably li interesting little wine. It's a Sanjo, uh, Montepulciano, and Sagrantino blend. Uh, 27 U.S. bones. Um, what made you choose this? Um, honestly, both of these were K-Murphs. Um, suggestions, yeah. K-Murph plotting, huh? Yeah. Um, Have you ever had the Salentino before? I've never even heard of it. Got it. Beautiful. That's a great answer. Yeah. Um, so, have you heard of Neil Rosenthal? Very, v very eclectic... I Cool. I the name is very familiar, yeah. but I I've no not really drinking. Yeah, from you listen. Exciting. We've all had a starting point. Let's do it. And you, you, you painted a very clear picture of what you know and what you bring to the table. Sounds good. What's going Let's, on with the speakerphone here? I'm gonna dial it up right now. Is he on? Let me put it on there. There we go. Speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm here. The, the things on the back here. It's the ringing. There we go. It's ringing. He's in Italy, right? Six hours ahead. Italy or Paris or something. Nine. Ian. Ian, this is Gary Day Chuck. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, man. We're taping WLTV. You're now live to all the Vaniacs. Oh, very nice. I'm in so much of a hurry right now. I'm yelling at my, uh, uh, yelling at my companion because we're trying to get to, uh, Joel World of Shots place. We have a thing at 9.30 and we still got to run there. So you're saying that it's more important to get to the place than be on WLTV? <laughs> I, can walk it. I can talk and run. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. We just wanted to call and say hi. M Squared's on the show. He made it happen. I'm sure you're proud of him. M Squared, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm so proud of him. Um, and I just really appreciate it. I mean, you're a man of your word. You stick to the fans, and uh, I'm really proud of that. No worries, man. I appreciate it. Have you drank any good wine in Italy? Oh, it was amazing. I went to Barolo, went to a few different really small producers, and they were extremely welcoming, and uh, it was a great time. Was the Nebbiolo treating you right? Oh, Nebbiolo was great. And I actually had this little grape that there's only like 12 producers. It was um, something Yolo or something like that. Um, I had it written down. And how, how'd you like it? Uh, it's alright. It's just a, a standard table wine, but it was interesting. It's like a little bit spicy, pretty, uh, but pretty light, but it was pretty interesting. So. Good man. Well, have a, have a good time. Go run to what you need to do. All right, man. Stay well. Somebody's calling you. Yeah, it's my brother. He's probably outside right now. He's my ride. <laughs> no, he's like, where are you? What are, yeah, what's going on? Whatever. All right. Well, we could have invited him in. No, it's all good. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's get into this. Mom, one more time. You got this? Let's just uh, recap. We just had an exciting conversation with Ian, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and Paolo Bay is one of the great, great, great producers of Segretino in the world. Uh, this is more of an entry wine for him, price point wise. 27 bones at San Joe Montepulciano and Sagrantino. Let's sniffy sniff it, M squared. What are you getting? Don't be scared. Whatever you're feeling, just don't make up shit. Oh, oh beep that up. <laughs> um, oh. Red, red fruit. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, um, I mean, heavy on the cherries. I don't know if you're picking that up, but mm. very heavy on the cherries. Uh, it's kind of creamy on the nose. I want to say like some current, like a, like a... I think you're right. Yeah. Almost like, I think it's a little more towards plum for my, for my nose, but it's almost like red cherries meet plum. Uh, there's also, it's also quite creamy. I, I get the oak on the nose, like almost like a little hint of vanilla extract. It smells delicious. Are you enjoying the smell? Yeah. Like yeah. It, it smells sweet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Almost like the middle of like a pie. Like remember Hostess pies? If you like split it yeah, up, like, yeah. right? Yeah, Get a absolutely. little candy esque. All right, let's <laughs> give it a whirl. I'm getting like thrown off here. It's incredibly dry. It is incredibly dry. It's a desert in my mouth. That's a good one. I like that. It is very, very dry. The tannins are really, really firm and extremely dry. You get the sour cherry flavors mm. in spades. It's yeah. exploding like sour cherries. Like remember M80s? Like you blow up like in the bathroom, like you put them flush down the toilet. These are like M80 cherry bombs. Um, just 
tasting it quite a bit. Very dry is absolutely true. And there's almost a little bit of like a leather component on the mid palate that I think is quite fascinating. It's a little hot in the back end. Just yeah, a little heat. Spicy. You getting that? Yeah. Um, but it's pretty well made. I, I, there, there's, it's a fascinatingly interesting kind of wine to me. What do you think? Tell it, I listen, like it. I didn't make it. If you hate it, God bless. No, no. <laughs> I don't hate it at all. Um, it's a little too dry probably for what I would normally want to drink. Um, also, I don't know if you get it. I get kind of like a burnt, like a, maybe like a charred type, type yeah, of. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah? Yeah, I, actually on the second flavor profile, I almost get a little bit more of like a pickles flavor. Do you get that? Try one more time. On the second time around, Ma, here, why don't you try it? Very sour, very kind of like cherries, pickle, green pepper, the charcoal chalky thing, I, I, I can see smoky. That was that leather kind of thing I was getting on mm. in, in the beginning. It, this is very much an old world wine. Old world wine fans are gonna eat this up. They're just gonna devour, bite the, they're gonna, you know, kind of bite the bottle. I mean, it's very old world, but I think it's pretty well made. What do you think? I enjoy it. It's not something I would probably how, drink every day or like with dinner, enough. but. I mean, how, yeah. how do you score in your mind? Like when you drink this, would you like, do you like keep mental score in your mind? Do you score in 100 points in um, your head? Five points or just good, bad, different? How trying you, to just good, bad, yeah. different. And yeah. so this is kind of like, this, uh, taking your body language and I'm sure you're trying to be polite, what have you, but you're just not feeling this. Eh. Yeah. For me, I like this. Now, and this is no indication, I don't want to pull this card at all, you guys know me way too well. It's a complex wine. I think if I only, be, is that your brother? Yeah, sure. Yeah, come on in. Warm. Yeah, sit right there. What's up, Get man? in here. Um, <laughs> how you doing, bro? Nice. He just graduated Mott, UConn. Mott, grab, grab the camera. I want everybody to see the pink, pink shorts. Come over here. We'll just show the pink shorts. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, you just graduated. Nice man. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what's going on here really is that this wine's really overly complex, and so not you know. For, oh, I'm a novice, let's be honest. For, from a beginning standpoint, I understand why this would be a challenge, and, and this is really a thought-provoking kind of wine. It's very, very complex, especially in the mid-palate transition to the finish. There's a lot of series of flavors going on here, and it's pretty dry and sour, and so a lot of people are not gonna like that just off the bat. Um, I, on the other hand, really like it for that. I think the complexity is very firm. I think it's an interesting wine. This means it's like a 90 point wine. I think it's quite good for the price point. And in a day and age where real Italian wines are really 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars a bottle, this real Italian wine for 27 bones is quite interesting. And I think you take advantage of it being from a part of the world that a lot of people, you know, Polo Bay, um, you know, the wines, that have Sagrantino in it, Montefacco, you know, they're just not as well known, and I think that's where the opportunity lines in this wine. I like it. All right, let's get to the Ronaldi. Um, Inferno Reserva. Uh, this wine is 100% Nebbiolo. It's from Lombardi, Lombarda, uh, and 30 U.S. bones. Let's rinse. So you decided because of the Mario B kind of charity theme yeah, to go to, to do to a little Italian aspect. Spectrum like of that. Italy, you know, a little like south, that. a little north. Yep. So rinse that out. Let's see what goes on here. So what kind of wines are you drinking and or enjoying on a regular basis? Don't um, lie. What's like the most embarrassing wine you love? Like Berenger White's in? Tour de Franzia. Franzia. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm in college, bro. Yeah, so like a bag of Franzia is good. Hell yeah. Very nice, man. <laughs> My, nice. my brother definitely knows about that too. You're a big fan of the prawns? Slap the bag. <laughs> Slap the bag. I love it. Um, but that would be like, you know, the entry guilty pleasure. Right. Yeah, like the hey, what's up? It's, what what did you have in Tus what did you have in uh, Tuscany that you know? Um a lot of Brunello, a lot of Are the ladies in, in college drinking the bag? Some of them. Yes? Okay. That's what the ladies that's why you have the bag. That's why, we go to, That's why you we, slap the bag. We live in yeah. completely different worlds, though. I mean, he went, to, he went to UConn. I go to Florida. I live in Manhattan. And, I mean, it's a little right. bit different. So he's the cooler brother. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. He's definitely, he's definitely a bro. All right. So let's sniffy sniff this up. Nebbiolo uh, can be um, really, really interesting from different parts outside of Piedmont, um, Lombardi. Uh, just a really interesting area. Um Rinaldi is a very, very good um, producer. Uh, the Valentina Superior is, is a signature wine that a lot of people don't know about. You're gonna go to a restaurant list or see this in a retail store, see 30 bucks, have no idea what it is and not buy it. And that's kind of what makes it fun, kind of nerd under the radar. What are you getting on the nose? Um, it's a lot more comfortable for me. Like the other one was a little no bit more question. like 
just kind of hit you in the face. This is a little bit, yeah. little bit more um, subtle. Yeah, definitely more comfortable to what I'm used to Do drinking. Do you get any nuttiness on this? Believe it or not, you know, usually a white wine trait, but I get almost like a walnut kind of component. There's also something else. There's a very intriguing kind of uh, Asian cuisine dessert. It's like crushed ice and bean. Ma, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like red bean. It's like considered a dessert in like South Korea. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, Crushed no. ice and like red bean. Mm -hmm. Somebody somebody, please leave a comment to what I'm talking about here. I get that on the nose in spades yeah. and I can't articulate what the word is. I can't remember what it is. But it smells great and I love that dessert. So underrated. I've, I've never had it. I had a masa actually. I was at masa not too long ago. How'd you actually, like I was telling Kamer, if I was at masa and I met Juan Muga at masa. And no he, way. Yeah, he was there and he was carrying all his wines with him because he just came from a taste or something. Met him and he was like, "Yeah, try all my stuff. It was real nice." College kid budget at Massa. Mm. How did that? Well, happen? you got friends. <laughs> I understand. You got friends. I, work, I, work I understand. Got friends. All right, let's give this a whirl. Sweeter, for sure. Heavier. Um. To me, no, the other one was a little bit more. Um, to me, the other one was more complex, but this is actually literally heavier on the palate. It's, yeah? I, I literally feel it on my palate more like milk than water, if yeah. that makes sense. Like, no, I, I can feel the weight. Taste it again. Let me see if you, not that I want to convince you to do that, but it's definitely a, a fuller bodied wine to me. Doesn't have to be. Just, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. What else? Um, Getting cranberry flavors? Yes. Loads. I was gonna say cranberries. Yeah, it's literally like you put your mouth, what do they call it, like bogs or whatever, you know, like, yeah. it's like, like it's like you went to Yukon and went out to like some of the cranberry farms. And Cape just, Cod and so Yeah, and just like put your mouth in, the, and just so much cranberry. Yeah. It's actually like ocean spray just exploded <laughs> on this set right now. Yeah. There's that much I, cranberry. I do get the, um, a little bit of the nut that, that you said from before you, though. Yeah, I, I, there's, so this is really, I mean, this is one of the easier breakdowns for me in a while. I get a lot of cranberry, I get a little walnutty kind of thing going on. There's a little vanilla, a little from the oak kind of thing going on, mm -hmm. if you taste that. It's pretty smooth, it's very consumer friendly. I think a lot of people can drink this wine. I don't think they'll get easily excited at 30 bones. There's a lot of wine, 17 to $22, that excites me more. I think it's pretty interesting, but it's really an 87 point wine at best. And at 30 bucks, whether you're on a college kid's school budget or not, it's still not exciting by any stretch of imagination. And one of the more disappointing 87 point wines for me, mm. just because I'm not feeling it. Yeah, I mean I was excited to try both of them, but um, I'd say that this one I like more than the other yeah, one. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, but you wouldn't drop 30 bones on this. No. Not when you can get like freaking three bags of Bronzia <laughs> for that I get like four or five for that. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> M squared, question of the day, fire away. They get oh, it's mine now? It's yours. Um, God. I didn't even, I'm not even prepared. I you haven't been it. watching I, the end of Wine Library TV enough then. Maybe not. I gotta think of a good one. <laughs> Can I own him? <laughs> he's, I he's, got him, right? Yeah, he's, alright. Um, let's see. <laughs> Question yeah, of the day. Um, oh, this is enjoyable. Because we, call, we called Ian, dream vacation. There you go. What would be your dream vacation? That's a very good one. Yeah. I like the color of your shirt. Yeah, thank you. That's good, man. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show, nice man. Nice good right. job. Good thank job you. getting on here. Thank you. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.